All right, guys, welcome back to Tim Davis Fast Street Performance. Now, I gave up drinking about 15 months ago, and people will keep writing to me and asking me to explain more about it. As you know, I was a fast jet pilot then for about 20 years in the Royal Air Force. I was an instructor as well. And during that time, I built up a pretty unhealthy habit with alcohol. And then five years after I left, I stopped. So I haven't drunk anything, as I said now, for about 15 months. We're in my gym. Just something that I kind of replaced alcohol with a little bit, guys. Uh, and I've got a com two comments that have asked me for some advice here. And uh, on the, uh, the first one then comes, and I'll put this comment on the screen so you can actually read it yourself. But I don't want to read the whole of the comment because else the video will get really long. But it basically says um, that this guy stopped on January the 1st this year. And he says uh, he's cut down massively on caffeine, ultra processed food, always good guys. If you're gonna cut out alcohol, cut out all the other stuff that entertains it, such as sugars and all that kind of stuff. Get rid of that if you can. People always say, oh, don't stop sugar. If you cut out alcohol, no, do stop sugar. Literally, it's the one thing that's gonna drive you back, but it's not. There's another thing I wanna talk about today that will drive you back, but sugar is really gonna keep you attached to alcohol. So stop that if you can. I still drink uh, tea, because I'm fucking British. But uh, obviously Richard the first flag behind me there, although technically he spoke French. He was born in Oxford though. And he did, uh, was a commander on the third crusades, of course. He says that on January the 2nd, so when his dude gave up, he weighed about 103 kilograms, 48 years old, six foot tall, lad. Uh, and yeah, obviously he was overweight and now he's down sub 100, he's down to 95 kilograms this morning. We're talking in March now, so about end of March, January, February, March, almost three months later. Now the main, this is the longest he's been without a drink since 17. I know how that feels because I was exactly the same. Didn't have a night off without alcohol in about 25 years to be fair. Although in Afghanistan, I did have a six month and there was a year where I really didn't drink too much in 2016, but uh, I came straight back at it. So he says here, any tips? Now he's saying the, the main thing he wants here, he says, I'm getting married in May and then we're off on a boat for two weeks. Uh, we've swerved the drinks package. I'm not sure I can avoid alcohol on our wedding day or for the two week cruise afterwards. Any tips, please? Yeah, I've got some tips, mate, all right? And the reason I say that is I'm not an expert on this, absolutely 100%, but I do have many, many events in my life where I think either it'd be nice to drink on that or that alcohol, you know, that's gonna set it off. Um, I have this thing in my head. Uh, I go to Berlin quite a lot. I'm not too sure why. I'm kind of attracted to it. My family, familial, Germanic, it's just one of the ways historically. So I quite like the German way of life and I like the 1516 purity law with their beers. And I was a beer fiend, wasn't I? I was a lager hound, right? So Tiergarten, massive Stein, uh, lagering away. I always think Berlin would not be complete without that for me, all right? But then how do I now go to Berlin, go all over the world, of course, without drinking alcohol? I make sure I kind of plan for it. I make sure I've thought about it. I don't wanna be caught out. If I am caught out, I've got some physical things I can do, not in front of people, um, but I can go outside and I can just do burpees until I'm, I'm you know, near sick, basically, and, and I'm, I'm all right, you know, re-engage the body. So how can this dude cope with it? Well, he can recognize the fact that in May, I thought when I first read that comment, it was March he was going on the boat, but it's not, it's May. So May is almost five months in. Alcohol really is out of your system within about 48 hours, 72 two hours, something like that. It's out of your system. Doesn't mean it's still fucking around up in your brain with those neuro pathways trying to re-energize themselves. So you're still gonna think it. I look at people a little bit differently when they're at weddings and stuff and all the glasses, re. Really, I, I don't need to be that guy anymore. I'm 50 this year, I've done that now. I'm still attracted to it in a massive way and that probably won't ever change. Uh, I'm attracted to all aspects of it, um, wine, anything, spirits, I'll, I'll neck that shit, but I'm always you know, looking for the lagers. And a lot of that probably is to do with the camaraderie as well, with the, with the men, all that kind of stuff. So what I tend to do is I look at loss as well. So how much have I sunk into this now, 15 months for me, and I'm not an idiot, I am a little bit of an idiot, but I know that if I was to go drinking again, fuck, I'm, I'm back onto that again, having to stop again, and I know how hard it was. And I will always say this, honestly guys, I always say this to you as, as well, because um, I don't lie about this shit, I'm quite open about it, as I'm sure you're aware. Uh, I, I think I got lucky giving up, like, it could easily have not been that way, I've been trying for five years to stop, and I just thought, first of January, I'm just gonna fucking stop forever. Like I'd always been stopping for a year, stopping for six months. I stopped for three, but I just went, no, I'm gonna fucking stop. And I thought about it and I just went, what does it mean? Like, what does it mean never to drink again? And I went through it in my brain. Who does it really harm if I don't drink again? Well, everything about not drinking is positive. 
there's no negatives. That's not to say everything about drinking is negative, but everything about not drinking is positive insofar as health benefits, everything else. You've kind of got to mature into it a little bit. And I think this is what this guy is going to realize, that he'll be able to set an example to other people there. You haven't got to be a prick with it. It's your wedding, all right? You haven't got to go, hey, I'm not drinking because I'm that big not drinking man. You can make excuses and shit. I'm on the water, I'm on the fizzy water, drink some of that, whatever. I'm having a tea, I'm in a bit of a break. You can play if you want to and just tell people. Or you can be, hey, I'm not drinking. I'm the... I always found that doing that, like, hey, I'm not drinking because I'm that guy not drinking, was just people just would tempt you back into it. Like, well, mate, just want to have a beer with me. Do you not want, you know what I mean? So I was always a bit like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to celebrate. I don't see me not drinking as a celebration at all. Uh, it's a very solitary thing. Very insular. I'm a very insular dude. All right. This, this gym is where I come, where I want to cry sometimes. I'm like, fucking go in there, mate. Put some weights on that fucking bar and just lift the fuck out of it. Um, because sometimes you feel really low, but I would have felt low anyway without alcohol. I can still remember times when I was drinking. I remember I went down to Falmouth for a funeral of a family friend and uh, had some big sessions. Wife was down there with me. I remember, I remember just being as miserable as I've ever been. Nothing I was drinking or doing was ever, you know, we're in hotels in Newquay having a great time and shit. Just, I could never drink enough. Does that make sense? Those guys out there, hit the comments because I know you know what I'm talking about when I say you, you can never drink enough. I can never be satiated with it, does that make sense? I don't get that anymore, now I don't drink. Uh, and I know it's something else now. I know when I'm feeling sad, when I'm feeling low, I know it's got nothing to do with alcohol. So what I'd say to this dude is, you're your own man, right? Since when did we let other men tell us what we had to do? It's your wedding, buddy, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, you do what you want to do, but if you, want it, if you think that one day is gonna solve all your issues and make you feel more comfortable, it won't. After that first beer too, I've, I've messed up more times than you've probably even thought about stopping. The majority of you, honestly, I've stopped and started more fucking times. And I know once I have those few beers, I don't even really want them. You've got to forget the first two down and then you're back into the seven, 10 a night. Within two or three days, you're back into that 10, 12, 14 beers a night. So it's your wedding, it's your wedding. I'm not sure how I can avoid alcohol on a wedding day or for a two week cruise. Mate, get into some fizz. You're losing some weight already. You're on a boat, all right? Boats go up and down. When the boat's going up, okay, you're, you're allowing yourself to come into the deck when it goes, apologies, when it goes down, come into the deck. When it goes up, it's an extra press up, isn't it? Because you've got the weight of the boat against you. Feel that boat. Get into some fizz if you want to. Enjoy nature if you want to. But again, you're gonna hit these shitty situations. The reason that we do this now, the reason that we look at alcohol now is that at some point, uh, so you're gonna you're gonna be faced with reality. Someone's gonna die. That kind of stuff. Okay. And the other thing I want to tell you, I just want to move on to this next comment down here, real quick, real quick. My phone doesn't want to do that, but give me a second here, guys. It's down here. I know the dude's name. He's called like Bullbag or some shit like that. What a lad. I got it. It's called Johnny Bullbag. <laughs> what a lad. What a lad. Very briefly, then he just says to everyone on the journey, and that's the great thing. If you're gonna whack a comment down there, then tell us your own experiences, because a lot of people out there get significant value from this stuff. I won't keep this too long, guys. He says falling off isn't falling off; it's learning. And absolutely, first attempt in learning, fail, all that kind of stuff. If you do fall off, yeah, you've, you've fallen off. Get back on it, but work out what you did wrong. He says here, I come from the other side of the fence. This is an interesting one. The misses as a problem with alcohol. Uh, there is a history of it in her family. She is ex-army, which revolves around the culture. She gravitates towards friends who enable her. Now, to enable something uh, is an interesting one. If you enable someone, it means you accept their negative behaviors. Now, who, what is a negative behavior? Who's a negative behavior? You know what I mean? But what he's saying is his, his wife goes to, uh, or his girlfriend here, goes to friends who enable that drinking behavior of hers, all right, which seems to be a little bit problematic. The last few years, she's become more aware that it's at a level that isn't normal. I've tried to help in many ways I can. But I cannot do it for her. Valid, mate. You can't do it for her. One hundred and ten percent. There's something you can do for her. I'll come on to that. Uh, and you cannot help someone who doesn't want to help themselves. Absolutely, it's a very depressing thing. My wife knows about that. She knows about not being able to help me. But she was a good woman, right? So she never challenged me or nothing like that. We go through months where she won't drink, but as soon as that just one mentality comes out, it's back to square one again. She's verbally abusive, a liar, completely unreasonable and irrational. Hides vodka in water bottles. Drinks in her car on the drive before coming in. Drinks whilst out walking the dogs. Going out anywhere is a ticking time bomb of embarrassment to the point where I just avoid going anywhere with her now. She will be violently ill where she's basically poisoned herself. When alcohol is a fucking poison, of course, that's what happens. 
you're a far better person for trying and there will be someone who appreciates yeah uh, no yeah, yeah don't, it's not about me mate so i want to answer your question here right i've said i'll give you an answer mate so the problem is when you give up something if you're giving up alcohol there's people around you who aren't giving up and they can feel very sort of violated almost by your behavior so this woman here if she's got this man in her life who's not drinking like holier art than now she's very defensive in what she's doing she's hiding that behavior i'd have a conversation with her look i understand that your drinking is problematic right maybe this dude doesn't drink maybe he does drink whatever you know what i'm saying uh you could say to her look i understand you know, you think your problem is your alcohol is problem, uh, problematic. You know, I, I'm not judging you on that, whatever. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about it at some point, maybe on a walk. Um, I'm not telling you to stop drinking, nothing like that. Be open with her. My wife was like that with me. What a good woman, right? She was like, she, she sometimes would be upset, like crying and shit. I'd be flying jets every day, so fuck that, right? But um, you know, you've got to keep your head in the cockpit. But she never really challenged me on it, and I knew she was upset. And now I kind of owe her quite a lot, you know? So obviously, you know, good behaviors now as best as possibly can. So what I'm saying to this dude here is he can be an example for this, this woman here. He can be an example for his wife here. Without preaching, without being all virtue signaling, shit like that, he can just embrace, him, embrace the good behaviors himself and then hopefully her behavior will change. There's nothing worse than someone who stopped drinking throwing it around the place. I don't fucking tell any, I tell you guys, because it's fucking YouTube, right? And it just smashes the stats on my channel downwards negatively you know what i mean but it's all good and no i can't start another channel you've got to be verified and all weird shit so i don't want two channels or nothing this is my life right so my life is a very um, not complicated life but uh not tragic not complicated it's just it's like any life isn't it? it's a little bit fucked uh, i didn't do very well academically somehow got into the air force flew jets for 20 years got quite high uh, and left with a major alcohol problem and now i run a business because um of course i get called a fanatical racist transphobe because um, I challenged the government on many, many things, specifically the discrimination uh, against young white men joining the Royal Air Force. So I couldn't get a job, I was sacked. So I'm a, I'm a you know, my life is complex. Uh, I'm not a wealthy dude, apart from hopefully giving up things like alcohol and shit like that, building a gym for myself um, and, and you know, working for home on my own business, which is great. There's a lot more successful people out there than me, 110%, but I'm happy. And I'm not lying when I say that, I am happy. And I wasn't happy for a very long time. And the reason, guys, is I know I've got control of very negative behaviors. I have zero vices. I don't look at porn, don't smoke, don't drink, don't do drugs. I don't womanize, genuinely. I don't, I don't fucking shag around, nothing like that. I'm not that dude, right? Um, I'm just lucky I don't, I don't, I don't need to. Uh, and I, I need to do more exercise, but I'm getting back into the exercise, that makes sense. So I don't have any vices whatsoever. Maybe the wife feeds me some chocolate in the evening and I'll eat it. That's bad, all right, I wanna stop that. So what I would say when you have someone in your life that has problematic alcohol um, experiences, you can call them alcoholic, call them whatever you want, look at the video, what is that now, 10 minutes is it? No, 15 minutes, I've got to go, I've got to go, I've got to leave you guys to it. I don't want you to take up your time. When you have that, guys, have that conversation. Uh, maybe just say to them, I'm here if you want to talk about it. I'm here. You'll probably get a lot of rage back because you living a reasonably virtuous life insofar as you may not have any vices, you may not be drinking, um, you may not be eating poor food. My wife gets upset when I cook for myself because she feels like she's not able to kind of care for me. Does that make sense? People need to care. I get upset when she starts strimming. I'm upstairs working and I can hear the strimmer going on. I'm like, what job do I have as a man if I can't strim? If she's cooking and strimming and doing all that shit, it's like, where do I fit in? You've got to give people roles. And someone drinking, has to. you have to allow them the agency to stop that themselves if they want to stop. They have to be able to see it. And the best way they can see it, they understand their behavior is negative. They understand their behavior is damaging. This, this woman's being sick because she's poisoning herself through alcohol. She knows that's not normal. Her friends are probably telling that her, her as well. The last thing she needs is you smashing in her face as well. You've got to be there. That's how I look at it. No advice for me, guys. I'm just saying this is how I see it. Is, um, the best thing my wife ever did was just say, you know, I'm, 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 I'm just here. You know, I'm, I'm here. Uh, you know, that's a lucky thing that I have. And I, I owe her quite a lot for that. Uh, because obviously, you know, I'm, I'm getting myself smashed up in the evening and then climbing in jets in the morning. Uh, a lot of dudes were doing that, to be fair. And it was an awesome time, but fuck how we're alive now. Well, some of us aren't, of course. So give people the space to work it out themselves. And all I would say is just try and be an example for people of, of what you can be if you can grip these negative behaviours. For the dude going to his wedding on the boat, don't make that the day, and I'm not lecturing you, don't make that the day that you're going to regret. It's your fucking wedding day, mate. Think about it. 
your wedding day. It's a great day. You're, you're allowing someone to come in your life. You're offering yourself to them freely as well. What a great day. And you've done five months worth of not drinking. The two don't match up. You've got a real positive and a real negative smashing together. Why not celebrate two positives on that day? And the way you've got to do it is go, right, when it gets too stressed, everyone's drinking, gets smashed up like fucking it's crazy. I'm just going to go back to my cabin, just you know, do some press ups, get that blood through the body, that kind of stuff. Go and look at the, the coast, or whatever, that kind of stuff. Look at the sea. I'm glad I'm alive. I'm glad I'm not waking up in some alcohol ward with some fucking liver failure and shit like that because we're all walking into that, guys. Look, 15 minutes. What the fuck already 15 minutes? Guys, I'm happy to keep doing these videos if you want me to do the videos. And I will show you the gym at some point. Hit the comments um, because I'll answer those comments for you if I can. I know it's just me talking. I know you're bored of it. I know he's going to get like 20 likes or some shit. When I was stopping drinking, I'd look for videos like this. And I'd look for people where I could see that vulnerability in them. I'm vulnerable. I am still. But I deal with it. Sometimes on a day-to-day -day basis, some days are better than others. That's all I'm saying. Look for those videos. They're out there. There's some good people talking some sense about not drinking. Try and find people you respect. I'm not saying me. Fuck that, guys. Try and find some people you respect that maybe have come over some adversity. Um, if it's about alcohol, it's a good thing because you can go, well, they used to drink. They don't drink anymore. If it's men, you know, I know some big men out there. Um, that don't drink anymore, that did, went through some huge trauma. Be that guy, that's all I'm saying. Here's something we love in the hero story. We love the guy that starts from the bottom and reaches the top, but there's something we love even more than that, and that is the guy that starts from the bottom, reaches the top, fucks it all up, fucks everything, drops to the bottom, and then does that slow climb back up again. We love that guy. You can be that guy, you can be that guy. All right, you can be that guy, we all fuck it up. We all fuck it up. We all got to start again. And that's, that's one of those fortunate things we have is that ability to start again. Guys, hit the comments. Hey, I appreciate you. I wish you the best. Um, it's Friday night, so have a great uh, weekend as best you can. I'll catch you next week, guys. Tim Davis, Fast Shit Performance.